So every week uh, we need 33,000 donations to support the needs of Australians and that ranges from road accidents and trauma through to childbirth, through to immunotherapy treatment across the country. So essentially, Kath, what you're saying, it's a life-saving thing to do. It is the ultimate life-saving gift. So this is your second donation, it right? Is, yeah. And what criteria do you have to meet? There are a number of criteria, um, but what we encourage people to do is to always check. We change our rules, we review often. So, for example, if you have a tattoo, uh, you can now donate straight after your tattoo. So we encourage people to check eligibility. We're going to take 500 meals in total okay. and roughly 10 minutes. Kath, are we donating enough blood at the moment to meet demand? Certainly, uh, we've got a couple of challenges at the moment. Uh, demand for blood product is extremely high. The country is getting back to its elective surgeries. And then secondly, we're seeing people looking forward to catching up with families and friends following the pandemic. So they're cancelling. So the cross between cancellation and high demand means we've got a bit of a challenge. Initially, we see when the state goes into lockdown, people tend to cancel, but we're an essential reason to be out and about. So it's great when you can come in through the lockdowns to keep coming in. Well How do you feel? Good, thank you. That was quick. It is. Not that I'm competitive, Manning, but is that some sort of record or not? It will be your record. My personal record, I guess. It takes just a few minutes to give blood, but for the Australian Red Cross Lifeblood team, this is only the beginning of the process. So when we have blood collections collected at the blood donor centres, they're delivered to one of our four processing centres around Australia. So processing centres in Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane or Perth. Once the donations arrive at a centre, they're placed into a centrifuge and spun at over 4,000 revs per minute. This separates the blood into three components, red cells, plasma and platelets. Why we need to separate whole blood into three different products is based on patients' needs. Red cells for people who have low hemoglobin counts, platelets for people who need help clotting, and plasma is basically water and albumin and all, all sorts of life-giving proteins. Just as each blood component has different uses, they also need to be stored at different temperatures to remain usable for as long as possible. The red cells are held at two to six degrees, and it has an expiry of 42 days. While a platelet is, is not a cellular product, it likes to be kept at 20 to 24 degrees. It also only has a seven day expiry. So we have to get that tested and out to the hospitals very quickly so they can actually use it. Frozen plasma, we, we freeze to minus 35 degrees centigrade, and that's to ensure that we can keep it for a lifetime of one year. From processing, then we go into testing. Australia has one of the safest blood supplies in all the world, and that's because we test for hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HTLV, HIV, and syphilis. We also do uh, blood group screening, and that's so we can ensure that we have the most compatible donor for the patient in need. Once samples have passed the testing phase, donations are ready to be sent wherever they're needed. Hospitals can order blood from us using an online portal, email, phone and even fax. Uh, we process about 20,000 orders a month nationwide, um, so that's about an order every two minutes. There can be a sense of urgency at times. About 2,000 orders a month are classified as urgent or life-threatening, which means the patient needs it right now. So for these orders, we're able to pack them up and get them out the door within a matter of minutes. One of the thousands of Australians whose life has been saved by blood transfusions is Victoria's Jacob Fry. So it was back in 2009. At the time, I was doing a full-time piloting course and I was only two weeks away from getting my licence. And on my way to work one day, I veered 30 centimetres over the centre white line of the road into the oncoming path of a truck. I was given a less than 5% chance of survival and my liver surgeon said that I pretty much had only a minute left to live before my body was completely dry of blood. In the first nine hours that Jacob was in hospital, he went through 36 litres of blood. So it's taken way over 100 donors to be able to save my life. I don't know the exact number of how many it would be, but uh, the amount of blood products I received were well over 100. I'll never forget... Well, I've, I've got five days of no memory, but, um, yeah, I'll never take for granted uh, the generosity of people going to donate blood because that's literally why I'm here. As a result of the accident, 
Jacob has undergone over 30 surgeries. But knowing his life was saved by countless strangers, he chooses to treat every day as a gift. I walk with a limp, walking hurts, but it doesn't stop me from living every day to the fullest. I'm paragliding. <laughs> I'm able to skydive. I'm able to snowboard, wakeboard, do all the things I love. And amazingly, five months ago, 11 years later, I was able to achieve my dream of being a pilot, which is incredible. And it's all thanks to Lifeblood.